Hello, hello, fellow Year 11 legal class students, and welcome to our next lesson where we talk about the Ombudsman and Compliance Bodies. We're hopefully going to smash through this one pretty quickly because it's fairly similar to when we looked at tribunals. And one of the really important things I think is important to point out to you on this before you go writing notes on every single word on the page. Honestly, in a lot of the work you will get based on these, you're either going to be given a case which has the Ombudsman or Complaints Body kind of listed within it, or you're suggesting one, or you'll be asked to write about one of your choice or one you think is relevant. So you don't need to know all of them. So you don't need to write notes like explicitly covering every single one of them. Just one or two in detail would be really good at setting you up to do well in everything we do in future. So um, we want to know about institutions that resolve civil disputes such as tribunals, ombudsmen and complaints bodies. We already talked about tribunals, so it's about to be ombudsmen and complaints bodies. Um, so let's have a look at these. So an ombudsman is a government official who investigates complaints from individuals against certain bodies. They provide independent, timely and accessible re resolution services which are free and fair. So already an upside there, if you need advantages and disadvantages, it's free. Who doesn't love free stuff? So I'm going to highlight that, free. Everyone loves free stuff. Unless the free thing is a punch in the face, in which case it's not that great. So the service is free, but the ombudsman is not a court. They try to work with parties to resolve a dispute, and they may have the power to make a binding decision. So they're not a court. They try and work with people, but um, they might not always be able to have the power that they need in that situation. So if we look at an example of one of these, the Public Transport Ombudsman investigates complaints about Victoria's public transport operators, which as you can imagine, there's probably a lot of. Um, they can only investigate matters once the public transport operator has first. Kind of a flaw in that. So public transport um, operators of Victoria, Metro, whatever they are, looks into it first. And then after they've looked into it themselves, the Ombudsman can look into it, but handles complaints in a fair, reasonable, just, informal and an expeditious manner. Expeditious means quick and efficient. Um, they're independent and unbiased and the PTO can make binding orders. So if there are issues with the public transport operators or how Metro is doing their business, the public transport ombudsman has the power to make binding orders about how they have to um, move forward from that. So I think there was an issue years ago about the fact that um, Metro was not on time enough and people were actually reimbursed because they weren't for, like public transport victoria wasn't actually providing the service they were meant to provide so people got a percentage of their travel reimbursed to them so some other ombudsman officers in australia so we've got the commonwealth ombudsman who takes complaints made against commonwealth government bodies the telecommunications industry ombudsman who takes complaints regarding phone email and internet services so there's been a lot going towards that recently about telstra i believe because telstra has been doing just terribly, even though they're the most expensive um, telco. So um, the telecommunications industry ombudsman would get a lot of those. We've got the Fair Work Ombudsman, who takes complaints about breaches of workplace laws. So if you ever have any issues around your workplace or think that your workplace isn't treating you fairly, it's always good to go to the Fair Work website and have a read anyway, but there are sections where you can lodge a complaint or lodge an investigation, and they'll actually communicate with you and try and find out if they can help you or not. I remember um, back when I worked in the bottle shop in the drive through there was a situation where it's kind of it's a weird situation. So I used to work Friday nights from 4 p.m. until midnight. Then I'd start at 8 a.m. on Saturday and work till 4 and then work from 5 till midnight at a different store. And basically how it worked is in retail, if you take less than a 10 hour break between shifts, you have to be paid overtime. And so what would happen is I'd work the Friday night and then I'd get overtime for all of the Saturday. And then often I'd work um, for Sunday rates on the Sunday. But what the workplace started doing was I'd manually change my clock ins so they wouldn't have to pay me the overtime. And so I ended up contacting the Fair Work Ombudsman to, to question about that. I knew that they weren't doing the right thing, obviously, and that, that was against the law. But I just wanted to get the advice of what they say I should do. And they were like, well, you should just tell them these things about the fact that they're committing time fraud and if they don't fix it, um, they could be liable for such and such. And that was a really useful way of getting help with a like workplace related issue without having to have all the knowledge myself. And then in Victoria, we've got the Victorian Ombudsman who makes complaints against the Victorian government bodies or accepts complaints about them. And then we've got the Energy and Water Ombudsman who takes complaints about 
regarding energy and water supply, services and bills. Then we move on to complaints bodies. So with complaints bodies, they are established by parliaments to help individuals who have a complaint about certain matters. So depending on the body, they deal with complaints about the provision of goods and services or decisions made by certain authorities. And most complaints bodies provide free services and focus on a particular industry or service, but they do not have the power to conduct a hearing or make a binding decision. So they're just gonna hear it and provide advice, which can be really useful in certain situations, but obviously most of the time we want someone who can solve our problems. So an example of this is the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission. They resolve complaints about discrimination, sexual harassment, victimization, and vilification. Vilification is just a very smart word. I recommend using it whenever you can. Uh, and it's empowered by the Equal Opportunity Act of 2010 and aims to provide free, fair, and timely dispute resolution and mainly uses conciliation. So mainly they've got an expert there on hand. Hopefully you remember this from two lessons ago. But there's an expert there who gives expert advice and back and forth and suggests possible um, outcomes for a dispute that is occurring. So outcomes can include financial compensation, an apology, job reinstatement, or a commitment to stop certain behaviours. However, Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission, or that awkward acronym there, cannot make binding decisions. So they can sit you down, so a workplace say they are treating you differently because of your gender you can sit down and kind of come to a solution for that. So maybe they weren't promoting you based on the fact that you were not male. And then they can potentially give you that position or find a new position for you within the workplace to try and treat you in a way that is more fair. But they can't make a mind decision. It has to be up to both parties to make that final step of making that decision. But it is a body that you can complain to if you are being treated differently in any way based on um, your race, gender, etc. Some other complaints bodies in Australia include um, so there's aviation complaints so there are several complaints bodies about the aviation sector they're probably not getting many complaints at the moment because there's not many flights happening but um, they exist to take on those complaints. The Inspector General of Taxation so takes complaints regarding the ATO decisions and processes. The Inspector General of Intelligence and Security who takes complaints regarding Commonwealth Security Agency so if the like AZ or anything is doing anything that is untoward or illegal, they take those complaints. Also, just to reiterate, you don't actually need to memorize all of these. I'd honestly recommend having the knowing the Equal Opportunity Commission the best because that's the most useful one. And then the next one I'd recommend knowing pretty well is Consumer Affairs Victoria, because it's going to come up in your Ed Roller questions. They take disputes between consumers and suppliers of goods and services. So we've actually recently been talking to Consumer Affairs Victoria a little bit because we had a Samsung fridge which broke and it was still under warranty and they were acting really dodgy about the warranty. So the motor in it was in, um, had a warranty for 10 years and it, we've had it for eight years or eight to nine years and we had some, so the dodgy thing about it is so it broke, we were expecting they'd just replace it and it'd be all good, we'd have our fridge working but what their deal apparently was, was a lot was under warranty um, they would need one of their repair people to come out who would cost us a certain amount and it was a ridiculous amount because it was their repair person so their hourly rate was insane their, their person had to come out confirm that the part was broken which we'd already had confirmed by a different um, plumber and then they'd be able to send the part out and then their person who once again is getting an insane hourly rate would have to install it for us and it would have cost like hundreds of dollars for something that was under warranty like that, that doesn't seem fair like if something's under warranty and it breaks you just replace it like that's the business's fault and so then we have to go through consumer affairs victoria and we're still actually chasing them up because the pandemic communication is terrible and we've actually just ended up buying a brand new fridge because who can be bothered waiting and we're dealing with a tiny fridge in the meantime and that's not enough space for the amount of food that i eat um but hopefully if we ever get a solution from the problem from Samsung, I'll let you know. Then we've got Disability Services Commissioner who takes complaints regarding disability service providers and a Health Complaints Commissioner who takes complaints regarding doctors, dentists and surgeons. So some strengths and weaknesses of all these dispute resolution bodies. So this also includes tribunals. So some of the really good things about them are that they are free or low cost and that promotes the um, principle of justice access. 
They're using formal methods which promote equality in actors, so people feel like they are being heard regardless of anything personal about them, and they're also able to access those, um, obviously, dispute resolution bodies. Um, dispute resolution bodies are often independent and impartial, which is great. Um, obviously, when two parties have a dispute, you both are not impartial, you both want to win. So having someone there without any stakes in the argument is great for suggesting possible solutions. Some of the weaknesses of them that many people are unaware of the existence of these bodies, I would say many of you until today and last lesson were the same. You, some of them you've probably heard of before, but most of them just would be like, huh? And even hearing them now, you're probably like, why do I need to care about that? Well, it's in the curriculum, so you have to care about that. Um, some bodies have limited powers to make binding decisions. So that's not great because you can't always get to a decision or you can come to an agreement and then people might not follow it overall. So that's really an issue with them. And they're not appropriate for large or complex disputes. So therefore, like some disputes, if they're too big, will just end up going to courts anyway and they'll end up taking up a fair chunk of time. All right, that's it. Um, other than the Ed Rollo questions, which you are going to see on Teams and then go and do because you are very excellent students. I hope this was useful for you. There's a lot of information to cover. Once again, I really recommend you know one or two of each of the tribunals, ombudsman and complaints bodies really well, and the rest of them just know they exist and know the strengths and weaknesses of them because once again, discuss, evaluate type questions come up fairly regularly or questions where they link into the principles of justice. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you very soon in virtual form because you don't actually see anyone in person anymore other than your direct family because the pandemic is crazy. Goodbye.